Hi everyone, Jeff Cote here with BoatingTechTalk.com. We've got a question from a fellow boater. All right, this boater is Jonathan reaches out and asks, Jeff, I was wondering if you could do a talk on the correct way of securing and shielding cables as you run them through a boat. Do you use braided cover or PVC split conduit? Do you use zip ties or other fasteners? Great question from Jonathan, right? I mean, the one thing is where the wires are going to be running on your boat. That's one thing. And that's not an easy thing because if you've got basically an open boat, how are you going to run wires is definitely one of the questions that we all ask ourselves. And the designer of your boat certainly asked that question to himself as well. But then the other question is, one, there's one thing to decide what the routes are going to be, but how do you secure those cables, right? And that's a really good question. So what we're trying to avoid ultimately, wh why do we secure them? We secure them, A, because uh, we want to avoid any sort of chafe, right? As cables pass through bulkheads, there actually there are points where they're going to be loaded. And those bulkheads are not like really soft wood right? They're actually most likely fiberglass. And if it's fiberglass, you hope for wood, but fiberglass is pretty sharp. So as we go through bulkheads, we're actually encountering different types of materials and those materials cause chafe on the wire. So that's one thing. And if it's loose over time, because some of us are in areas where our boats are actually feeling the swell and are constantly feeling a sort of motion, right? Well, that motion over time can really cause a lot of chafe on a, on a wiring. I've seen it. It's a real issue. Um, it's not a joke. And our goal as boaters is to look for wiring and for chafe. Like when I'm on a boat, every time I walk on, I'm looking all the time for places where there's potential chafe. And of course, it's not going to happen in a year. It's not going to happen in a month. But it depends on how often you use your boat and what type of sort of weather you're in. And I've seen boats where the wire chafed right through the insulation, right? So the insulation of the jacket is a varying thickness, depending, of course, on the cable size. But you're trying to prevent chain. So, okay, so now you've got the idea of why we're doing it. So how do you do it? Well, you know what? I've seen every way. So I would say um, one is, first of all, try to avoid something that's going to trap any sort of condensation, right? So the reality is some of us sometimes are in certain climates where there can be condensation or you might have a leak and you definitely don't want to have any water pooling uh, on your cabling. So whatever your system is, want to make sure that there will never be, your wiring will never be in a standing ring because you, you would think, you know, oh, it's going to be straight. How could, well, sometimes the wires sag, right? They're not perfectly, so there could be a place if it was, let's say, for example, piping, you could have a place where water got in one end and it actually sagged down. So you don't want that. So you want to basically have any sort of protective that's not going to pull water. Um, and that's the problem sometimes with split loom. Split loom is cool, but it also causes chafe. So we like split loom, but I'd rather have a mesh. I'd rather have something that protects chafe, but at the same time doesn't actually have standing water in it. So that'd be one. Um, so we'll use often the mesh. But a lot of times on boats, actually, the, from A to B, what they'll do is they'll maybe using, they'll protect, they'll maybe put a pipe around the cutout. I've seen that. Uh, or they'll put a, something protective around the bundle as it goes through a bulkhead. And as soon as it leaves the bulkhead, then again, the wiring is actually not even in a protective sleeve. Again, probably for heat dissipation. And again, some of you that are designers, you can share in on why you actually don't do that. Because rarely do we see wiring in bundles throughout boats. They're together, and then what we'll do is we'll actually uh, use zip ties, and not so tight, but tight enough so that they stay in place and they don't move, but not so tight that the bundle is really condensed. Again, you don't want to have as possible, you don't want to have a super, super tight bundle. A lot of builders do that way, but there's drawbacks, so given a choice, my suggestion is to not go too crazy on having that bundle too tight. Big fan of zip ties. Now, of course, uh, Make sure that when you cut the zip tie, do it properly so that you don't end up cutting your arm. My arms are full of scars from my hands going uh, behind panels where people have cut zip ties in ways that are just cruel and mean. Anybody of you that worked on boats <laughs> will know that zip ties can, can certainly make us cry uh, at times. I've had some gashes that were pretty deep, uh, left a lot of blood. 
So make sure that when you cut your zip ties, um, other people actually are putting even zip ties that are undoable. Like I've seen that on boats where you can actually undo the zip tie. And the other thing too, and I, we've seen this all the time, and this is definitely, I actually advocate, I'm a huge fan, as you're actually adding more and more uh, wiring and IE cabling to a bundle, take the opportunity to remove the old zip ties. You know, like people add, the bundles obviously over time just keep on growing. But as you keep growing, the zip ties just keep being added on top of added on top. So I'm a big fan of cleanliness. Make it look like it's intentional and you know what you're doing. So, and that's part of making a clean install. So use the zip ties, but remove the ones that don't work. And make sure that you've got at least every 18 inches of support. On some boats, we go down even as 12 inches. Um, and make sure that the bundle is really nice and taut everywhere, right? So it doesn't sway and it doesn't chafe as it goes through the bulkheads. Great question, by the way, Jonathan. Thanks for asking. If you're curious, we've written whole articles about this. Go on our website, search it out. Uh, and we've got a lot of other uh, tech talks about this very topic. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. Um, it actually, it really does make a difference. It encourages us to keep posting. So if you're watching this video and haven't had a chance to subscribe, we really do care because the more of you that are watching, the more <laughs> of us over here are willing to put, spend more time in creating content. So thanks again.